All right, recording has started, and this is the December 12th, 2023 Rook Community Meeting. A uh, special note is that uh, we will not be meeting during uh, two weeks from now in the next scheduled meeting uh, for holidays and Christmas and all that jazz. So this is the last meeting of the year then, I suppose. All right, Jeez. a little melancholy there. All right, so let's, let's look at uh, milestones. And uh, 1.12, uh, there was a dot nine release since the last community meeting that we had at the end of November. So let's just briefly look at that and see what might have been important in there. Mm -hmm. Well, what to mention from that release. Uh, one thing I will mention is that one of these fixes in the dot nine release actually caused a regression. Let's just see which one was it. The... Where was it? I can't remember. Anyway, the ingress, it has an issue with the namespace. Oh, that's where it is. The second item there, the namespace, add namespace to all resource templates for templating purposes. Um, it doesn't affect normal Helm installs, but um, well, the ingress was affected. So we need to get a, a new patch release out to fix that regression. So that fixes in, I'm just waiting to get the next release out that there we go okay and so then we are what's the scheduling then for 12.10 oh tomorrow it looks like then so we will be yeah. pushing out that release tomorrow right? mm -hmm. and nothing blocking it nothing in the on the board except for things that are done Yeah, there are a couple of to-do items left and left over there that I've moved over to 1.13 now. So we can keep track of all the new development in 1.13. We can still nice. backport things to 1.12, of course, for some time, but no blocking issues are tracked there currently. Perfect. So then uh, we can start talking about then the main event here, I suppose, of the 1.13 release. So... Let's look at the board and see, is there things that are still blocking, Travis? Yeah, so the main thing, uh, we've kind of been delaying since, so the release was originally supposed to be last week, but it's like, oh, that's the Reef 18.2.1 release is pending. It's out any day now. We thought, let's just wait a couple more days for it so we can base uh, our 1.13 release on that with our base image and our examples. And as of today, it's still not out, uh, but I just was chatting with Yuri and they're actively working on getting it out, working through a couple of build issues, hoping to have it out today, but it could be tomorrow. Uh, so I think, yeah, by tomorrow, we'll plan on having that out update based on that 18.2.1. If all looks well, then go out with, with that. If there's any last second issues with 18.2.1, we'll still go out with 18.2.0. But yeah, I'm just trying to get that uh, based on the latest and greatest from Seth while we're at it. Okay, but everything else is good. done for the 1.13 release. <clears throat> yep, that sounds like a, a good plan then. And so yeah, the things that to do and in progress and stuff like that, and we're not considering any of those blocking, uh, you know, we can ship uh, tomorrow then without those, right? Yes, that's the plan. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Travis, are you, who's, cause we had, we had had a, in the past, you know, other folks helping running releases and stuff to kind of spread that knowledge a bit. Uh, did you say, did you have a plan already for who's running the release or anyone helping out and stuff like that? Um, Blaine and I have been doing it together. We did the beta release together. Um, yeah. So Blaine, I guess we should talk about that for the .o release. If that works. Yeah. Since we're in the same time zone, it, it helps. Do that together. All right. Anything uh, then else to bring up or chat about on the 1.13 board? Nothing else I have. I mean, there's still features coming, features we want to get in, but they'll just come with patch releases there. Right. Yep. Okay. So we've got our plan and our, our uh, sequence of steps for getting it out. 
All right, because we've we've already got obviously we got one other two branch out there. It's been there for a while. Um, yeah, we got the next steps to do to get their their dot o full release out. Cool. Anything else from milestones then? All right. I don't have anything else. <clears throat> okay. So uh, yeah, so you were just talking about this one, uh, right, Travis? So there's not much more to add to that one. I don't imagine. Exactly. Yeah, we covered that already. Yep. Okay. Cool. And then KubeCon EU Paris, uh, is that, uh, has that already been submitted uh, already that we've got the speaker lineup or is that still in progress? It has not been submitted yet. So we have officially until December 31st, but I'm hoping by next week to submit it after, well, or this week if we're finalized. But the tentative speakers I'm currently as uh, Blaine, Alexander, Annette, and JC. Uh, if some of you know, may know JC, he's a, um, active in Ceph and um, yeah, so he, he's just a great Ceph expert to, to have there, but hadn't found anyone from the community so much, uh, but he is on our, on our team, extended team, works more directly with the net. I think, and... extended, excuse me to interrupt, Travis, I think JC's uh, mother tongue is French, so that would be good for having him in Paris as well. Exactly. Same holds yeah. true, of course, for for Sebastian, who who lived in Paris for many many years, so one could hope to mm -hmm. to meet Seb again in Paris. For those who can right. attend that. Yeah, I don't know if he'll be at KubeCon, but that's great. Yeah, and JC was at this last KubeCon in Chicago. I was talking to him, and he was definitely excited to go to Paris for KubeCon, since that's where he's from. He lives in Vegas now, so he's a bit far from home. <laughs> Yeah, it's not a not an easy commute to get back home there. Right. Then I mean, so uh, that that Seb is a name I haven't heard in a while, and one that I definitely miss. Uh, but you, Travis, you don't think that Seb would be at KubeCon though? That's the, not in that world now. Well, a couple of years ago, he moved to southern France, so he's like an eight-hour train ride from Paris. I don't know if he'll be at KubeCon. That's all. Uh, that's not too bad. That's easy. And speaking of uh, not having seen a lot of SEP recently, I, I can add to this that after not having talked to him for quite quite a while, I have uh, recently managed to catch him on, on, on Rook Slack, and he helped me with some patch reviews a couple of times. So that was great. Oh, nice. I actually talked to him again. Yes, he lives in Marseille now, which is one of the most ancient cities in, in France. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Well, yeah, I'm glad he's doing good then. I'm glad he's being helpful still too. <laughs> and it's a beautiful area. I've been there many years ago. It's at the Mediterranean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the south there. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a part right. of France I haven't been to yet, but wouldn't mind going. I'd be yeah, okay with that. I can highly <laughs> recommend it. It's a beautiful nice. area. That's nice, Michael. Yeah. All right. Uh, so doing a uh, the plugin, uh, another release for that 0 0.7 bit a little bit since the plugin, or sorry, since the release, I guess. We had one in October, so not too long. Oh, not too long, uh, but it, yeah, we just merged another command as far as working with stale sub volumes, so you can list them and delete them for the you know, working with RBD volumes or no, sorry, CFFS sub volumes and. There's another feature which is nearly emerged that Javier has been uh, working on. We're almost done with that one to, as far as destroying a test cluster to make it simpler to clean it up. It's nice for during development, at least. Not usually used in production since you don't want to destroy a cluster too often in production. But um, yeah, getting close on that one. It'd be nice to have that one and then do a the plugin release in the next few days too while we're at it before the new year. And so that, that's the only unmerged item, Travis, is the, the destroy command? Yes, I believe so. It's just having CI issues under investigation. Got it. The, the consistent uh, thorn in our side for like six, seven years now, <laughs> CI issues. Yeah, it's always a thorn, right? <clears throat> when it works well, it's great. But... Yeah. 
Um, okay, great. Yeah, that'll be that'll be great to get a release of that the plugin in addition to the 1.13 main release. Also, having both those done for the holidays, that'd be great momentum uh, to finish out the year. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and so then... that's just basically the the one reliable constant in the equation. It's the unreliability nature of CI. <laughs> so it, that, it is couldn't constant. resist the pun. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Very true. Very I guess true, to be Michael. fair with that issue, it's new development that is causing the CI issues just on that PR. It's not unstable CI, at least for that. Oh, it's actually, it's catching, catching it's actual catching issues. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Well, yeah. I hold my tongue. I hold my tongue. I apologize. Poor little CI I didn't do anything. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yes, so this is a uh, design. So it's been merged. Uh, do you want to talk about this and give us a little more context? Yeah, just to point this out. So this has been a, a request from definitely from several upstream users where object stores you know, require multiple pools. And if you want to create many object stores, the pools add up quickly and the PG count gets large, which Ceph isn't really generally happy about. So the there's this design that, that Jiff and, and Blaine and I worked through as far as how to get the object stores to share pools using Rados namespaces. So each object store basically has its own Rados namespaces to keep the data independently managed at the Ceph layer. Uh, so that design is merged. We don't have an owner yet to implement that feature, um, but just an FYI that um, we'd love to have that feature and just not clear who's gonna implement it yet. Since Jiffin is currently busy with other things. So what, what Jared's showing here, is that a merged file in the Git repo? That's right. Yeah, under yep. the design so, docs. Because I couldn't help noticing that in the title, the plural is not quite grammatically correctly formed, lacking an S or objects or something after the object store. So that means you could I could propose a, a PR because I seem to have missed something in reviewing the design doc PR here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say with design docs, we're not as strict about the, uh, I guess, the wording or grammatical as much as the documentation. It's nice to be strict about. Yeah, it's. But, I don't want to kind of digress or so too much here. It's, it's just that I usually can't help tripping across such a thing because my brain just notices them. Mm -hmm. And somehow I have the, the OCD to bring them up. Yeah, okay, we I can think my OCD focuses well. on the, the docs. <laughs> yeah. on, on the actual content, that's better, of mm. course. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So let's take this offline. Cool. Yeah, and I, is there anything... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Blaine. Um, I, I was going to add the, the context. Um, uh, Dave with Core brought this up. There was um, th there's like a community member they're working with who is having issues. Um, they they have like a really large number of object stores. Um, I think something like eight or ten, and that's effectively like running stuff out of uh, like crush rules. I think, and that is one of the cases where this feature can be like actually kind of critical um, versus just like a, a nice to have. Does that mean that we expect uh, someone from Core to pick up the implementation of this design and run with it? That That is sort of what <laughs> I offered in our like maintainer <laughs> chat. I, I pinged uh, Dave and, and Alexander and mentioned that we have a design and if, if they want to invite someone, then uh, they're welcome. Yep. The table is open. There's a Excuse seat at the Blaine. table. Blaine, when you're saying Dave with course, is that Dave Mount? Yes, yeah. I don't, okay, are there multiple it. Daves? I don't know. I only came across this one, I guess. Oh, okay. I just wanted to confirm that it's this Dave that you were talking about. Thanks yeah. for confirming. Yep. Dave's typically here at the meetings, uh, community meetings, but not today. Um, uh, speaking about attendees here, uh, off topic, but uh, Travis, did, did you kick out the Otterbot before I got here by any chance? 
Or is, no, is it's just not here today, actually. Oh. Yeah, it's gone. I wonder if my, because uh, every time I kick it out, the, you know, I click the yes, send a report to Zoom. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe that got on someone's desk. Maybe it finally way. helped. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Cool. Good to know. Uh, all right, sweet. So, yep, that's good. That's the uh, design is merged in and it's ratified and agreed upon. And hopefully, we'll have an owner to drive the implementation sometime soon as well. Um, cool. Well, that was everything in the agenda documents. Were there any topics that didn't make it into the doc? Uh, all right. Uh, so yeah, so I think that's everything for the agenda today. So the biggest thing coming up then obviously is 1.13 release as we talked about. And uh, we will meet again in this context together uh, the community meeting in 2024, I guess. So happy holidays to everybody then. All right. And get, let's get that release yep. out though first. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No holidays till the release is out. Go. No holidays until the release is out. Yeah. Bye. All right, all right, see y'all. Thanks. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Bye-bye.